Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mohit, and this is the Kit Coder Programs for Do Space Summer Program Kickoff 2020. As all of you know that we have been doing all of our summer program digitally this time. So this is one of the activity that we are doing today for the kickoff program. And we will be doing some drag and drop coding in Minecraft with Minecraft characters. And then we are going to go on an aquatic mission to go in the sea to find some hidden treasures. Well, I welcome you, all of you. We're gonna take some time here to see if we can, if we are to be joined with some other people. We'll start in a few minutes. And if you have any issue, you can write me a message in the chat box. We have a message from Tulani. Hi, Tulani. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have uh, Sanvi here. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is a coding activity. Hi, Isaac. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Dukan. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. We are waiting for two more minutes here. We'll start at one. Yes, to answer your question, yes, we'll be kind of playing Minecraft, but this is a game where you will be able to code your activity by yourself. So you will be able to choose a character and then you will be able to code by drag and, drag and drop activity and then you will be able, so we'll be doing some puzzles here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to uh, you know share the link in a minute with you so that you can go on your computer. If all of you have an access to another device, any other computer, laptop, tablet, what you can do is you can listen to me on this screen and then you can go do the activity with me on the other computer, other device. And if you do not have any access to other, other any other device, what you can do is you can minimize this window and you can look me uh, you can look what I'm doing in the minimize window and then you can follow me in the another tab. No, unfortunately, no, you will not be able to uh, choose your own character. Well, we do more activities like this. We do kit coders every Tuesday, five to six, where you can create your own characters. So Gracie, if you're interested in playing, you know, choosing your own character or uploading a picture, we, we do more activities. We do a, we do a software, it's called Alice 3, where you can create your own characters. Do you have to be on a computer? No, you can do it on your tablet, your mobile, phone, but it's, it's easy to, if you have a computer, it will be much easier for you. But if you do not have any access to a computer or a laptop, what you can do is you can just listen to this whole presentation. You can see what I'm going to do. No, this is a coding activity, so you will not be able to do it on Xbox. You're going to see that in a minute. Let me give you, I think it's the time we should start. Okay. So, this is the URL here that we'll be learning tonight. It's an activity on code.org. I'm going to paste it here for all of us. It's on your chat box. So you can just click on this link and this link will take you to the activity that we will be doing today. Or if you, if you do not have option to click, you can just go to this URL and this will take you to an activity that we'll be doing today. So you can choose your own character and then we'll be doing some drag and drop, drag and drop coding activity. We will be making our own blocks. And then we are going to go on a mission to find some treasures in the sea. Please let me know if you face any difficulty to go on this website or follow 
following my instructions, please write me a message in the chat box and then I'll be able to answer your question if you're not able to follow the activity we are doing today. Yeah, we have some more participants, more is here. Welcome to all of you. Who are the people who are just joining us right now? I'm gonna tell you we are doing an activity, a coding activity. And this coding activity is on Minecraft, a game which is very popular with kids. So we are choosing our own character. And then after we choose our own character, we are going to do some coding. Dragon coding today. And then we are going to see how it works and we're going on different missions. We have 12 puzzles to complete. So I'm gonna, we're going to start very soon. And to go to this URL, what are, what are you going to do? What do you have supposed to do? So you can, there's a, there's a message in the chat box or your window on the Zoom. You can click on that link and that link will take you to the, the activity that we are doing today. So it's a studio.code.org forward slash s aquatic forward slash stage, stage one. And please write me if you face any difficulty reaching this activity. Okay, so let's start. Let's go ahead and start this. Yes. Let's start that. So the first thing that we're going to do is watch a video for one minute, 25 seconds. And this is going, this is video is going to give you an overview how and what are we going to do today. And then we are going to start with our puzzle number one. Let's go ahead and watch this video. Hello, you're just in time. Welcome to the Voyage Aquatic. I'm about to embark on a quest to find hidden underwater treasure. And I'm very glad to have your help. Who knows what we'll encounter along these mysterious waterways? We're meant to meet our first guide somewhere on this dock. Welcome adventurers. To complete the Voyage Aquatic, you'll need to solve a series of puzzles using code. Here's how it works. Your screen is split into three main parts. On the left, you'll see the Minecraft world. The middle area is your toolbox, where you can find coding commands. And on the large area on the right is your workspace. This is where you can start commands to build your program and control your movements. The instructions for each level are at the top of the page. Click the plus sign to change between long and short instructions. Try dragging blocks from the toolbox into workspace, stacking them and then click the run button to execute your commands. You might have to try a few times to get it right and some of the puzzles have more than one solution, so experiment to see what works. If you want to try again, click the reset button to go back where you started. If you need to delete a command, just drag the from your workspace back into the toolbox. Remember, click run to see what your code looks like in action. Okay, enough messing around, fellow adventurer. Let's start coding to find some underwater treasure. So we just saw the video. And as I said that we're going to find some underwater treasure with the coding activity. So we have to solve 12 puzzles and then we have to go to different missions and we have to do some drag and drop coding. So after you are done watching this video, this will ask you to choose a character. So as you can see on my screen, uh, I would like to tell you the people who just attend, attend, attending us here that you know you can watch me doing this and you can follow me after this or you can just go along and follow me as I do as I do this process. So now after watching this video, I have to make a choice for character that I'm choosing today. So either I can choose Steve or Alex, I'm going to choose Steve. And then now on the top, as you see, as the video explained that there will be instructions on the top. There will be instructions in the top right here. So this is the instruction, you will see all the instructions and there's a less and more thing here. So you can either click on less so that you, if you do not need instructions, you know what to do. You can click on less and this will disappear. And if you want to read the instructions in detail, you have to click here and you will see all the instructions in detail here. And then on top, it says the name of the website, which is code.org and the name of the activity that we are doing today. It's Minecraft Voyage Aquatic. 
And these are different number of puzzles here. So we have to go ahead and following the puzzle here. And then we have to, we have 12 in total. And then see how are we going to do about all of this. And there's a sign in link here. So what you can do is you can create a sign in for you, which is very important that it saves your progress every time you, next time you log in. For example, if you're going to do five or six puzzle today, it will save your progress and you can go back and you can start from the seven again. So if you, if you want to, and if you need to take your time, create a sign in, choose a username and a password, and always try to remember that username and password or what we can do is you can write it on a piece of paper and keep it with you in a notebook so that the next time you have to go, you will be able to log in with the same username and password. Okay, let's start now. So the blocks activity here, the what we see is the two blocks. So these blocks are gonna talk about, these blocks would say, what are the blocks that you're going to use here in the canvas? So this is the canvas, which is also called workspace, where you will be dragging these codes from here. See like how I'm dragging this, dragging this codes here and drag them. And when you want to make a code, you always remember and make sure that they fix with each other like this. So they have to be fixed with each other and they always make a sound when they are fixed like this. And when, if they are fixed with each other and if they make a sound, this gives you an idea that code is ready to work on. So always remember when you drag a block of code from right to left, always have to remember that it makes sure that it's fixed with each other, it fits in each other, and it also makes a sound of click to make sure that it is going to work. And then it is going to give you uh, the number of the blocks that you have here in the workspace. And the start over is something that if you are not, if you are not happy what you code here and if you don't think it doesn't work, you can click on start over like this and it will ask you, it will ask you a message. It will give you a warning. Are you sure you want to start over? If you think you are over, you want to start over, you can click on start over and you will get it from the starting. And then there's another thing which is show code. So what is the show code about? If you click on show code, this will tell you the message in the coding language. So this, the activity that we are doing today is in drag and drop coding that we use to teach kids how to code. It's a very popular activity with kids. But if you click on show code, how these codes has been written in a computer language. So the backend of these coding is JavaScript. So you can click on show code and you can see how these code have been written in JavaScript and you can read the JavaScript language and you can have an understanding that how these code has been written in the real computer language. And this is all about on the right hand side, we talked about instruction, talked about puzzle here, we talked about the sign in instructions and the instruction more or less. And then we have blocks here. We are going to draw, drag boxes from left to right on the workspace to make sure they work. And if you, if by mistake you choose a block that you think you do not need in the workspace, what you can do is you can just remove that block. When are you going to drag from right to left? A recycle bin option here will be appear and you can, click here and this will be deleted. This is how you delete the unnecessary blocks. So this is about the interface of the application that you will be uh, using today for the Kid Coders activity for summer 2020 kickoff program. And then there's a run option here. So after you are done with writing all the code, what you have to do is you have to click on run to see how your code work. How are you, how is your character going to react with the code that you are doing? Okay, I think I have uh, you know, explained enough this activity. How are we going to perform coding activity today? If you guys have any questions, please feel free to send me a message in the chat box and I'll be able to answer your questions. Before we start our puzzle first here, I'm gonna take a pause for one minute so that you know, if anyone has a question, they can write it to me. I'm going to see here in my chat box if I have any questions.
question answer and looking at all the attendees here. Perfect, looks like we do not have any question here and all the kids, they are, hopefully they are understanding me and they know what to do and they know how to follow me. That's great. Okay, so let's start here. Let's start with our puzzle number one. So we have the puzzle number, always remember you have to start with the instruction. You have to read the instruction and instruction will tell you what you have to do in this coding puzzle with your character. So the first instruction is, you need supplies from the voyage ahead, collect the boat from the chest. Do we have to pull up the tab? I have a question here. Uh, I didn't get your question. What tab are you talking about? So uh, yeah, so what you can do is either you can do in the same, uh, on the same uh, browser in the different tab. I think that's what you meant. I'm gonna show you one uh, puzzle here works. So first thing I'm going to do is read an instruction which says you need supplies from the voyage ahead, collect the boat from the chest. So this is my character here. If you can see my mouse that I'm moving my, uh, my, my mouse on the character, this is my character here. Yes. Yes, you can do that. You can open it in the, so what you can do is you can copy paste this link here and it's also in the chat box. So you can copy paste this link in a different tab. Like you can open a different tab here like this and you can start working along with me or you can just listen to the whole lesson and you can make notes on your notebook and you can follow me after that. Yeah, you can start with me. I'm going to start with the puzzle number one right here now, you can start with me. So I'm just going to read instruction. They said, you need supplies for the voyage ahead, collect a boat from the chest. So this is my character here, which is Steve. Now Steve has to go to this chest in order to uh, find boat from the chest. Okay, so looks like I have to go straight forward. Yes, you guys can start by your own. So I have to go forward to the chest. So I'm gonna click here drag move forward and always remember when they fit with each other so i just moved move forward to the right and they fit with each other and they made this click sound which means my code is correct so i just wrote this two line code by myself with drag and drop coding and i'm gonna click on run to see how it works so i just click on run looks like looks like it didn't work i have to go more forward so this is with move forward there is just one step. So I'm gonna click on reset here and I'm gonna take move forward, move forward. And then I'm gonna click on run again. Perfect, so I just wrote four, three line code here, which is move forward, forward, forward. So this is how it works in computer language when you're writing, you have to write a code to do go in a specific direction. We are doing drag and drop coding. So I just wrote a language for my character to move three steps forward. So it just moved three steps forward and it went to the chest. Now it's going to collect the board and we're going to go on the mission number two, on the puzzle number two. Yes, let's go to the puzzle number two. Sanvi, good job. Click on continue here and then we are going to go on puzzle number two. Yeah, so if you if you get the idea of this, how are we going to do this? Please keep on doing this. And you know, I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna keep working on my mission, on my puzzles. Now I'm on puzzle number two. So it says, so the first and most important thing is always read the instructions. So let's read the instruction for the puzzle number two. It says, boats are much easier than swimming in open water. Head to the end of the dock to hope aboard. So I'm going to go into this, my boat here. So I looks like I have to go forward. And then I have to turn right. And then I have to keep moving forward until I re reach the boat. 
So this is the lesson, this is the code that I'm gonna think is work with this character now to reach the board. So I'm gonna click on run and see if it works. Perfect, that worked for me. Please write me if it worked for you too. So puzzle two completed, I just got into the, into the board. So I'm gonna click on continue here and go to the puzzle number three. All of you, if you are following me, you can do one thing. You can just write me messages in the chat box. If you have any difficulty reaching to a activity or solving a puzzle, either you can wait for me to get there on the specific activity, or you can just, uh, you know, write me and I'll answer you. Okay, it looks like I'm on puzzle number three. Puzzle number three says, grab the oars and pilot your boat across the open seas to catch the cord. Okay, so looks like I'm here in the boat and I have to go keep forward. I think I have to just keep going forward. Okay, let's see if it works for me. I'm just gonna write. Looks like I need more codes here. So always, always try, you know, and anticipate what is the code that you are going, that is going to work. So I'm going to write here and then click reset and click run again. So that's wrong again. So what is wrong here? We have to grab the oars and then we have to go to the code. So I have to go forward, forward, and then forward, and then forward, and turn left. And always remember when you have a drop down here like this, if you have a drop down in any of the block activity, it means you can change the value what is written in the drop down. So if I click on this drop down here, I can see, I can change it to right, I can change it to left. So whenever see you see a drop down, it means it can be changed. Let's click on run and see how far we can go from here. Yeah, looks like this is gonna work. So let's see. And then I'm gonna turn right. And then go forward, forward. Let's click on reset and run again. Looks like I'm still, yes, you can continue by your own if you want to. So I'm gonna click on left here and then I'm gonna go click on forward, click on forward and click on forward. Now this looks like I have more here. We'll go forward and then turn left. Click run again. And then turn right, forward, and forward. Okay. Okay, it looks like we have another video to watch here. 
So let's watch a video. We are on puzzle number four now. Let's watch this video. And then now we are going to learn more things in order to how we can repeat the code. So we are going to see if we have if we have to write a simple code two times, how we can do about it. So let's see, let's watch this video. Great, we've caught a codfish. Did you know if you feed a codfish to a dolphin, the dolphin will guide you to a shipwreck where there may be treasure. We must be getting closer. The next set of puzzles are bound to be trickier, so we better learn some more coding skills. What's this? A cave? Welcome, adventurers. My name is Squid. I noticed you were using the same set of commands over and over in some of the last puzzles. Must have been a bit tiresome. Do you ever wish you had a way to do something over and over again? Like, you know, washing dishes or brushing your teeth without getting tired or bored? <laughs> that would be nice. Computers are really good at doing the same thing over and over again, using coding loops. When you want your program to do the same instructions many times, you can use a loop. The loop contains instructions with the command to repeat untold goal. Once your program starts a repeat untold goal loop, it will keep running the instructions inside until it gets to the goal. Try this for yourself. Place the commands you want to repeat inside the repeat untold goal block. Click run and watch it go. Well, that was a little weird. Who knew squids could code? I don't even think they had fingers. So now we know about loops, let's use them to bag us some more treasure. Okay, perfect. So this video, this lesson, puzzle number four is about loops. Let's see how we're gonna do about loops. Okay, so loops are very important in, in coding because when we write code, sometimes we have to do all the things again and again. For example, if you are working on a website, uh, you know, or if you are working on any, making any control, or if you are making on any template, sometimes you have to write same things again and again. So coding helps you to give you a loop situation to write code in loops. So when you write loop, you know, when you write code in the loops, what happens is the code is going to do the things for you by itself. So you don't have to worry about writing those things again and again. So as we see here, it says when run, and it says a loop activity repeat until goal reaches. So I'm gonna see if I can fix move forward here. I'm gonna click on run. So this is a code, until I reach my goal, my character in the board will keep move forward. And I see my goal is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna start with the instruction. So let's feed the code to the dolphin. I'll use a repeat until block to get across the ocean faster. So I'm using move forward and I have to keep moving forward. So I'm using a loop to use move forward block. As you saw in the last puzzles, what we were doing is we were using move forward or any block again and again. We were using the same code again and again. So now we have a loop feature where you can just write it once and then we have to put that in the loop and repeat until we reach the goal and click on run and see how it works. So I'm gonna click on run here and see what happens. Okay, so puzzle four completed. So this was how you can write a code in the loop. So we just wrote a two line of code and then all time total code should be 10 lines of code. So, you know, we just saved eight lines of code. This is the power of coding activity in writing in the loop. So whenever you write in a loop, you can do things faster and easier and writing with less number of lines code. Let's go and go uh, to our puzzle number five and see what more thing we have to, uh, you know, learn here. I have a message here. It says, I don't like this. I didn't get this. So if you, don't li if you do not like this uh, mission, you can go co core.org and there are more activities that you can find and you can try those activities and they are more fun. There are, there are so many of them and there are, and code.org, they recently added activities for artificial intelligence. That we did in the last session of Kid Coders Tuesday. So if you want, you can go out, you know, go and check out that activities too. So I'm gonna go on puzzle number five here, which says uh, move. So let's, let's start with the instructions first. They said there's a nut, there's an idea shell hidden somewhere. 
explore the shipwreck to reach the chest. So looks like we have to go here to the chest. And my character is here. So I have to go. Let's see, I think I have to turn left and then keep moving forward. So I can use one loop here and then I can turn left and left again. And then I can move forward to, to go here. Or I can take a different route too. So either I can take right, I can turn right from here. I can move forward and then I can turn right. Yeah, let's see work on this one. So I'm gonna, so you can drag this and you can disassemble the cores that are attached to each other. So I'm gonna choose turn right. And I'm gonna use repeat until goal, move forward. And I'm gonna use turn right here one more time. Let's see it run and see how it works. No, so I have to turn right and then go forward. Let's see how I can do this. and delete this one and click on run. Let's delete this one and this one and then choose turn right. So move forward and turn right until I get to my I think I need one more move forward here and then turn right. Yeah, perfect. I just uh, did this puzzle. So I did puzzle number five here. Let me know if you can do it by yourself. It's kind of get, you know, tricky as we go further. So we just wrote 15 lines of code in five lines of code. So we just save writing 15 line of code. I'm gonna show you my code again here so that you guys can see. So I wrote a code to go right. That's gonna click on reset and see how it works. Yes, we're gonna get there and I'll show you how to fix set number eight. So let's work on, very good job. Well, you are way ahead of me. Good job, Leo. So yeah, so what we did here is when click run and then we turned our character right and then we repeat and go move forward, forward and right because our, our chest is on the right here. So this is the code that is going to work on number five. Gonna write and then write again. So always remember where is the goal, where do you have to go? And then it will be easier for you uh, to see what are the code that you are going to write. Perfect, good job. Well, if you are done, if you are working on a website, show us what kind of website are you making? So this is the code number, uh, puzzle number six here. And it says, let's read the instructions. Looks freezing out there. Catch a salmon on your way to underwater ruins. Okay, so my character is here. And then I have to go to the salmon right here. So I'm gonna write the code for this. The one when run is the thing that I'm gonna do. So repeat. So there's a new block here. Do you see there's a new block which says repeat three times. And I can always remember when there is something in the things here, you can change it. So I can change it to two, I can change it to one, or I can change it to 21 times, how many times I want to. Okay, so let's write a code for this. When run, repeat three times, move forward. So I'm gonna go three times, move forward here. And then I'm gonna take a right. And then there's a repeat until go. So I can go forward. 
and turn right. Okay, perfect. Let's see if it works for me. So it went three times and then, no, that's not correct. So it went three times forward and then it turned right. And then I can just keep going forward. And always remember I can change this number too. So I'm gonna change this to six and see if it is gonna go forward till the time I have to take a right. No, so I have to reset it again. And I have to turn left. So always remember when you have this drop down, we talked about this. We have drop down, we can change this. Perfect. I just did the number six. Guys who are working with me, please let me know. You can use the if path to the right turn right. Yes, there are more than one way to do this. Yes, that's absolutely correct. There are more ways to do this if you want to follow a different path. So you can, you see that I went all the way right. So what you can do is you can go three steps forward and then, then you can take a left and then you can go and take a right in the end too. Okay, let's gonna click on continue here and go on number seven. Please write me what puzzle are you? Please write me are you on to see answer from all of us and see how people are doing here. Looks like we have another thing to learn. We can watch another video and then we can learn more things and it will be a different thing Perfect, someone is with me on number seven. Good job. Rohan is on seven, is on nine. Perfect, good job, Sanvi. Yeah, keep working on this. We have to go slow. I have to go slow because I'm working with all of us. And then there may be more participants that they are still working on previous puzzles. They can write me too and we can, we'll be able to help them. Leo said he cannot do it. Leo, uh, you said you are on eight, yes? Yes, so we'll be doing, we will be doing eight after this. So I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? Or maybe Sanvi is, Sanvi is on nine. Maybe Sanvi, you can go back and you can tell us how did you do eight? You can write the code and you can tell us how did you do eight for Leo? Yeah, so we're gonna watch video. Wow, another free puzzle solved. And we've caught a salmon. We're not quite as exciting as piles of gold, but we'll take what we can get. And I have a feeling that Nautilus shell will come in handy later. I wonder what lurks in these ruins. Perhaps another hint. Let's take a look inside. My name is Nettie, and welcome to my ruin. We make decisions all the time based on conditions. If it looks like rain, then we'll grab an umbrella. If we're hungry, then we'll eat a snack. If we see a creeper, then we run in the opposite direction. Computers make these types of decisions too. They can actually respond to conditions using code. To program a response like this using your code command, select an if path block. Select the drop down to create the command. For example, if you write the command if path to the right and place turn right inside the conditional, then when Steve reaches an open path to the right, he will always turn right. If there's no opening to the right, he will not turn right. 
These conditional if commands are helpful when you run code in unpredictable situations, such as mysterious ruins and underwater caves. Try using the if blocks and take your code for a spin. Wow, Nettie's ruins were awesome. I really got to move out of my parents' house. So what do you think? Are the conditions right for us to complete the final puzzles? Let's give it a go. Perfect. I hope every one of us will watch the video. So these puzzles going forward, they are on conditional uh, coding. Conditional coding is also, guys, it's very, very important in coding. If you write in HTML, Java, PHP, whatever coding you write in, it's very important to know how conditional coding works because, you know, most of conditional situations in, in, your, in your coding. So you give it a different path and how it changes, it's actually dependable on what kind of code you're writing in a conditional uh, conditional coding. So this is very important thing to learn. This logic is very important thing to learn. Okay, Sanvi said she would help. Yeah, so just write us the code uh, for this and then we will see uh, for the number nine. Let me see here, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about, uh, talk about this uh, puzzle seven. Let's read the instruction here, guys. It says, you found the underwater ruins, search the stand zone for a chest containing prime stone treasure. Okay, so this looks like my character is here and then I have to go to the chest here. So I have to go keep, if you know, always you can, if you are learning about drag and drop coding and if you are new, you can always look at your character and you can imagine that this is you. Imagine that Steve is you and you have to go to the chest. So see how does it work? So you have to go keep forward, 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 and then you have to turn right. And then you have to turn one more right to get to the chest. So let's see what's the code here. It says, when run, repeat until go, move forward. If path to the right, then we have to turn right. Because when there is a path to the right, we have to turn right. Because when, when Steve would reach here, on the left, there is a wall. So we don't have to get to the wall. Uh, there is a message here from Caleb, which says, how do you do number six? Okay, so I'm gonna go back and show you number six in a minute. Let's work on number seven. So you can skip it. You can go to click on number seven and you can follow me. So I just wrote the code it says when run repeat until goal move forward if path to the right and turn right so when it's going to keep going forward and then if there would be a path to the right it's going to turn right let's say click on run and see if it works for us perfect so we just did number seven here and then as you can see that you have see, you can see a message here, which is you just wrote four lines of code and all time total code would be 30 lines of code. This is the, this is the power of writing conditional code guys. It's very important. You know, you write to know, you can think and you can, you know, prepare a logic in your mind that how you are going to write code for smaller you know, small lines so that it works for you. This is how you can write conditional codes and loops that saves you so much line of coding if you know how to use them properly. So I'm gonna click on continue here. I'm gonna go number eight. Someone sent me a message and they are, how do you do number six? So I'm gonna go back to number six and show them what's the code for our number six. And then we're gonna go number eight. And someone told me already that they are number they have stuck on eight. So we are in eight here. So let me see who is this person here. Okay, so yeah, so this is number six. You asked about number six. This is our code to number six. So we did when run, repeat three times. And then we, so there was a there was a block here, which is repeat three times. And as I said, you can click here and you can change the number. 
So you can just always write the different number for it. So I chose number three because we have to move three forward, then do it. So, and then we turned right here and then we repeated six times to move forward because we have to go forward here. And then we uh, chose repeated until goal move forward. So we just kept going forward until we reached the salmon. And as I told you, when we were doing number six, that you can choose different code and you can choose different paths. So I could have gone, you know, go straight here and then uh, forward and then left and then right. So you can choose a different path for this. Yes, Sanvi, if you want, you can help with number eight. We are on number eight now. And I hope you get the answer for number six. Yeah, I, I hope you get the code for number six. I'm, I'm gonna pause it here for a few more seconds so you can see the code, how it works and you can choose a different path too. Let's go to number eight now. Well, we have been getting a someone is in, someone is in stuck on them, it works. So number eight is, let's read the instruction for this is, first icebergs, now lava, get through this volcanic island and find the tropical fish in the coral reef. Okay, so we are here, we have to find this fish. So, Leo, this is, this is pretty much similar to what we did in number seven, actually. So we have to go, keep going, if path, so we, this is loop in a loop. This is a situation of loop in a loop. So I'm gonna show you how it works. So I'm gonna take it, repeat until goal, and then move forward, because we see we have to go keep moving forward. And then we have to turn right. If there's a path, we have to turn right, right. And then in the end, we have to turn left. So I'm gonna take this here. So this is a situation of loop in a loop. Well, Sanvi just said she would help us. Maybe she is still working on this, but Sanvi, I'm gonna show you how this number eight works. Oh, Leo got it actually. Good job, Leo. Good job. So this is, so guys, this is a conditional for loop in a loop. This is also a very good thing to learn here. I'm gonna show you how it works. So if path turn to the right, so we have a message here. Okay, thank you. So if path to the right, I'm gonna to turn to right, right and right. And then in the end, I have to turn left because my fish is on the left. So I'm gonna put this left here and just I'm gonna click on run and see if it works. So I'm gonna go keep going forward, move forward. And if there's a path, so there's something wrong here. Let me see what do I have to change. So move forward. And if there's a path, turn to the right. Turn to the right, okay. So move forward, forward, forward. And then there's a path, then turn to the right. Right, and then I have to turn right again. Let's see if it works. I think it should be left. No, so, oh, I think I did, I did this wrong because it should be, this loop should be further like this. Move forward. Repeat until goal should be in later. Let's see. So this should be repeat until goal. move forward and let me delete this one. 
So it will keep moving it forward, 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 and then if path to the right, it should be to the right if there's a path to the right. Oh, let me see what I'm doing wrong here. So it's going forward, 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 move forward. And then it should be turning right. And then turn left. Okay, it's taking for me to, oh yeah, it should be turned right here. If part to the right, turn right, yeah. This was wrong, I should choose it right here. Let's run now and see if it works. So I'm going forward, 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 and there's a path to the right. I, Steve turned right, and then there's a path to the right, I turned right again, and then I turned left. Perfect, I did number eight too. Well, that was, that was the code for number eight, guys. I'm gonna go click on replay and see if you can see the code again. So this is, this is an example of loop in a loop. Very, very important when you will be, when you will be, you know, start learning HTML or WordPress or Java or PHP. This is very important to write conditional coding. Conditional coding is very important. And then you see how it works, loop in a loop situation. Okay, please write me if you have any questions. Let's go and f uh, go to the number nine here. Well, I have a message. How do you do number five? Okay, so we are just gonna take a pause here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go to the number five and uh, show our code, how we did our five. So this is the code for number five. So we did when run, turn right. So your character is looking, so this is a tricky in number five is your character is looking forward. So you have to make your character look right first. So you have to turn it right. So when it will turn, and we have loop is move forward, turn right to the chest. So this is for code for number five that we did. Yeah, just keep working on guys. I'm so happy that you are working with me. Please write me if you have any questions. And then I'm gonna take time, I'm gonna answer you. We are working slow on this. I know some of us, they are moving forward, you know, ahead of us, but we are working slow so that all of us, all of our, you know, attendees here, all of our folks, they can work with us. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, just write me any, any question you have and I'm gonna take pause and I'm gonna show you how we did the thing, that puzzle specifically. Now we are number nine here. And also keep writing me what puzzle are you on? Are you done with number nine? So the number nine is I'm gonna do the instruction for us. It says, when you made it to the reef, you search for the heart of the sea, use the blue and the red coral to reach the treasure chest. 11, Rohan is on 11. Wow, good job, Rohan. Okay, so this is, uh, we also have as you will see, we have more codes here. We have three more blocks here. Two more new blocks actually. Sanvi is also in an level. Well, very good. I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. You're doing very good. Keep working on this. And always remember all of you guys, you know, you always have to think the logic behind the coding. This is very, very important. You have to think the logic beyond why do we write if sentences? Why do we write conditional coding? Why do we write code you know, in the loop? Why do we write code loop in the loop? So this is how you, know, you are going to see that how does it coding work in the real language, real life, or how you can work with different coding when you are going to be high school, middle school and writing code with different languages, maybe HTML or Java. You have the logic that's very important okay so let's go work on number nine you made it to the reef now search for the heart of the sea okay i use the blue and the red coral to reach the treasure chest okay 
So this is when run, I had to, I just read the instructions. So let's see, move forward. It's standing on blue. We have, as you see, we have new, new two blocks here, which is if standing on blue coral, if standing on red coral. Okay, so I'm gonna go forward first. Forward, 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 I have to get here. And always remember I can change it like this. You see when there's a drop down, you can change it. If any one of us have done with, uh, you know, number nine, they're welcome to write their code. If standing on, I'm gonna choose this one. If standing on, I'm gonna change it to deep water. I'm standing on deep water now. So I'm gonna say when I'm standing on deep water, I have to move forward. Let's see how it works. Sand. Yeah, so it's moving forward now. And then I'm gonna add more forward here. So I'm gonna keep writing until I reach the blue curl. Sanvi, uh, you said 11 didn't work for you. We'll go there. And then someone is on level 10. So see, we just reached the blue coral here and then I'm gonna see, choose this one. Actually, I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna see if I can write this one until if standing on, I have a message here. Let me get to the message. Perfect, good job. Okay, so I just, yeah, so I'm on the blue now. So I'm gonna choose this one, I'm standing on blue. And turn, uh, turn right. And then move forward. and keep moving forward, forward, one, two, three, three times forward and then blue and then right. Yeah, click on reset and click on run. So this is, yeah, so I'm on blue and then turn right, move forward. Oh, yeah, so I am very close here. Do you guys see? And then I have to go one more forward here. And then I'll be on red one. So I'm working on number nine. Please write me guys, what are you working on? I know some of them are number 10 and some of them they are on 11. So I'm gonna turn left now. I have a message here. 
Perfect. Someone is on number 11. Good job. Number 12. Well, good job. Guys, we have four more minutes for this session. Keep working on this. Well, everyone is on 12. Good job. Good job, guys. It says 11 is not done when it is done. Why? Uh, you can go and click on the instructions to see if there's more in instructions. I'm gonna turn left. And then move forward. and then turn right and guys as i said you know there could be more than one ways to do it because you can turn right left and you can go reach your mission you know as you just have to go and make sure you reach your mission looks like i have messages here Perfect, good job. Uh, Sanvi said, I did not do it for me. I didn't get that, Sanvi. Can you write that again for us, please? Someone is on number 11. Guys, before we uh, end this session, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you something. Our summer uh, website here. So that I can give you some act some information about the program that we are doing in summer. Many of you know. Let me go here and perfect, Sanvi, good job. Yeah, let me uh, stop the share screen. I'm gonna talk to you in a minute. I have to find a summer website for you. Okay, I'm still working on this. Give me one more minute, guys. Okay, perfect, I got this. Let me start the share screen again.
So guys, this is our website for summer 2020. As you, many of you know that we do summer programs for kids in which you, have, you can do, you know, you can learn so many applications like this. And you can also do more. And this time we are doing summer video challenges. And also we are doing, uh, you know, summer make along videos also. In summer video challenges, what you can do is you have, you will be asked to do some activity uh, for summer to make, uh, like I have just posted a video that we have made it cotton ball launcher, which will be video for June, uh, June first week. So you can go ahead and you can look at those videos and you can make those small things by yourself. And this is, if you want to, uh, you know, take a note of this, this is a URL here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat box too. Very good job, Leo. So this is the summer. Uh, I'm going to send it to all of us. Yeah, this is the URL for our summer program here. So you can go to this website, this page and learn about all what are we going to do and it will be available from June 1. From Monday, there will be more activities, home activities, coding challenges, coding classes like this, and more advanced classes, HTML, and you know more stuff that you can learn. And all of them, they are for free. And you can also get your summer passport. There will be information about summer passport too. And then you can also request to mail it. And you can do like color for summer passport and you can send it to us. Please go through this, all of the website and see, you know, what are the things that you can do and what are the things that you, you are going to learn this summer. Wow. What, what date is it, Sanvi? Well, thank you so much for joining us, guys. This is the all time we have and it's uh, past two, three minutes past two. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We could not do all of the challenges. We were number nine, but I hope you will be able to, you know, keep working on this and finish all of them. And if you feel you are stuck somewhere, you can write me an email and I'm going to tell you the code about it. So I'm going to write my email here. So if you're working on this challenge, it's mmohit at dospace.org. This is my email address. 28th of June. Very good. Well, happy birthday to you in advance. Thank you so much, Kalab, for saying that. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope I could answer you. You were on number five and then number seven. I hope you could see the code. And you know, guys, do not hesitate to share what you do. And if you are stuck on any of the puzzle, number 11 till nine, whatever it is, just write me an email and tell me that, you know, I was in this session and I was not able to do this. And I will write the code for you. I will, I will solve the code and I will take a picture and I will email it back to you so that you can see it and you can follow it and you can do all the challenges. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to our summer 2020 program. And then also the one more thing uh, is in mind, I'm going to, going to say that I do Kid Coders every Tuesday from five to 6 p.m. And then every time we do different activity, like last time we did uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and we did, we'd learn about how to make pixel art animation and GIF by itself and you know, and much more. We did coding activities like this. We did Scratch and we did Alice Free. We learned to make videos and so many things. So join us from five to six. And keep working on your, uh, if there's any difficulty, I will, I will reply, reply back to you and I will tell you how to solve that code. If you are stuck. Thank you so much guys and happy birthday, Sanvi in advance. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good rest of your day.